us attend, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, many of the people said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the scripture said that Christ is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? And so there was a division among the people over him, and some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers then went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, Why did you not bring him? And the officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. And the Pharisees answered them, Are you led astray, you also? Have any of the authorities or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd who did not know the law are accursed. And Nicodemus, who had gone to him before, and who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? And they replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. Again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today is Pentecost, 50 days, Pente, Pente, the 50, the 50 days, and um, we had the ascension of Christ, we had his, his we had his, what well, we had his birth, and we had his ministry, we had his crucifixion, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a total package, it really is, then we had his, his ascension, and now we have Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's the Holy Spirit? We hear about the Holy Spirit all the time. <coughs> The Holy Spirit is the very power of God. And the power of God is given to us who believe. It's given to us in our baptism. That's why we sing Osis Christon, those who have been baptized. And that's the difference between the baptism of Christ and the baptism of John. The baptism of John washed away the sins. The baptism of Christ washes away the sins, but it also gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what enables us to walk with Christ, to commune with Christ. It gives us power. It gives us wisdom. It is the very power of God in our life. When Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, what happened? What happened is he lost the Spirit of God. That's what really happened. He was created in the image of, of, and likeness of God. He retained the image, but he lost the power to grow into God's likeness. And that loss was really the loss of the Holy Spirit. So that meant that Adam, that Adam, and Adam, of course, the name, he represents all mankind, was created for life in and with God. But because he lost the power to grow into God, he also lost the power to become the person that God created him to be. That's restored in Christ. That's restored in Christ. That's why Paul <coughs> calls Jesus the second Adam. So we in our baptism are brought 
on a path that restores wholeness to us and that restoration occurs in our very communion with God. It really does. We were created to live in and with God. We were created to share our lives with Him because the sharing of our lives with Him is what completes us and what makes us whole. And that's why we read today in the Gospel that, that, that Christ is really the living water. Christ gives us the Spirit, and the Spirit is the water that nourishes a very, very thirsty soul. Because without Christ, without communion with Him, we are looking for life that can only be given by life who is Jesus Christ. The Spirit, then, is the comforter, the Scripture tells us. And this is Jesus speaking. John chapter 14, 15, 16. It's the comforter. The Spirit is also the means by which we can, we can practice the virtues in our life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. All those things. If those things in our, are in our life, the Spirit is in our life. If we have a hard time doing those things, call on God who will give us the power to do them. The Holy Spirit is the completion of what we were created for, which is to be sons of God. All of us, men and women alike, sons of God. That we would be born by Him of the Spirit in our baptism. And as a result, as a result, all the Christians then become a new nation. A new nation. And that's what we read about. In Acts, that's the significance about, about hearing the gospel in their own tongue. You know, it was a celebration. It was a feast day in Israel when the Spirit came down. That's why all these people were from, from different parts of the world were meeting in Jerusalem. And the apostles go out and they preach the gospel. They preach the gospel, the very word of God. And these people from the different countries heard this gospel in their own language. Because, because those who are baptized into Christ now are called by Christ and they form a new people and a new nation, a royal priesthood, the <coughs> Apostle Peter tells us. And he unifies, and he's unifying and will unify all people together under that gospel, Jesus Christ. He is the unifier. And the gospel then, the gospel is meant for all people and all nations. Because that's what Jesus said at the ascension. He said, go and proclaim to the gospel to all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. See how it all comes together? See how it all comes together? And that, that spirit, that spirit, is given to us in our baptism. We cultivate it. We cultivate it. We learn to listen. We learn to obey. That cultivation then begins in prayer. So just like the Father, just like the Son prayed to the Father right before his cru crucifixion, that the, that the Comforter, the Spirit, would come, we pray as well that we might be able to, to, to cultivate the Spirit in our life and learn how to listen, and learn how to obey. So today, as Pentecost, then what we do is, is, is we then, because it's an important feast day, we begin that process anew every year with the Pentecost prayers, where we ask the Lord for the forgiveness of our sins and the opening of our hearts and minds so that cultivation might begin and might continue. And we'll be saying those prayers today right after liturgy. So, may the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please rise.
Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by thy grace.